So I have a question for you. Yes. Do we need Dave Grohl to tell Americans about Canada? Oh, great question. Um, it's funny because that was shared in one of our group, our work group chats. Yeah. And uh, and I wondered why Donna Grantis and Dave released the O Canada two days before. And then comes out the the uh, Dave Crown Grohl. Royale commercial. Yeah. Yeah. Now, was that played just in Canada? to stroke our egos or was that also in the u.s that's a question i have when when was the commercial second half or first half didn't see it <clears throat> i think it was second half and then i saw it and i was watching the fox um oh. broadcast yeah, second were you half. watching the fox broadcast but with canadian commercials were you actually truly watching the fox no broadcast? we were watching fox the fox channel oh right of course because you steal television i forgot sorry See now you can't put this. You can't put this in the pre-show. <laughs> Why can't I put this in the pre-show? Well, say Campari sucks. Will you put that on the pre-show? No. Okay, so then. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, you. It was also announced. It, it seemed this was the Super Bowl all about music. It was also announced that you too, is uh, starting a residency. In Las Vegas, Vegas did, you, did you see that commercial? No, I just heard it on the radio the downstairs because I was running upstairs. Okay. And it should be interesting. We didn't really watch any commercials because we didn't actually start watching the game until probably closer to 7.30. So an hour later, okay. Probably 7.30, quarter to 8 by the time dinner was ready, and then we had paused it, so we basically fast-forwarded through all commercials. Ah. We'd stop every once in a while. Every time Steve Martin would show up, Kel would stop and then rewind and watch it. He had good commercials. They had good commercials. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, that was an interesting play by Crown Royal. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of Americans would probably not believe half the things he said. Yeah, they probably said, ah, he's drunk. Don't you get it? The play on. Who knows? But I need to. So let's talk about Rihanna. Okay. Uh, my uh, mother-in-law affectionately calls her Rihanna, uh, okay. but Rihanna, her performance, I thought, was outstanding. It was, it was just amazing. It was, was she lip syncing. They all lip sync. No, they don't. Who doesn't lip sync? I thought the whole thing after. There was some controversy in No, they all forward. they all so here's the thing. Uh yes and no. There is they play to a track where she is singing on the track. Yes. So that yes. So even if she put the mic down and just shimmied her way Which she did a few times yeah. up and down, um then it 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 you know if the, if the mic goes out, if the battery goes out or whatever that's there so to everybody who watches any live television show where there is music um that's all they're playing to a pre-taped version now so was she purely lip-syncing no because she did sing uh, but if she decided not to sing at all, they would still be her voice singing. Call that what you will. Um, but she wasn't like mouthing without putting her voice into it. Um, but regardless, what what did what did you think? I I loved the performance. Um, I thought it was amazing in its simplicity, and it's it just seemed so massive. At the same time, there was no fireworks. I mean, on the outside there was, but, you know, like in the stadium, there was no no flashing lights, none of that, you know, smoke and mirror stuff. It was just amazing. What are your thoughts on her performance? Um, I thought it was over the top in a simplistic way, for sure. Um, yeah. I, I thought it was interesting to just have quick 30-second hits of many 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 songs yeah 
I kept waiting for a special guest. Yeah. Um, that never happened. Yeah. Um, now, were you disappointed there wasn't a special guest or? Well, we come to expect a guest, but I'm trying to think whether. Did the weekend have a special guest? I don't know. I can't remember. No, I guess not. Yeah. Sometimes there's not. special guests. Sometimes there's not. Like Prince never had a special guest, I don't think. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you didn't yeah, like I, it. You didn't like I, it, Greg. It was, yeah, you're an old man. <laughs> no, tell me, tell me, honestly, honestly, honestly. We we joke around, but honestly, yeah, I know. I I I I thought it was a lot of the same thing. Okay. All right. I was expecting more. Yeah, you were expecting more. It, it was from... over the top. Don't get me wrong. It was spectacular. It was awesome. It was spectacular. But yes, it was a lot of the same thing. Yeah, you were expecting her being pregnant to like do flips and splits and jump around. That's you were expecting her to do that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Listen, we've got uh, Valentine's coming up tomorrow. Yes. I, I know that uh, this won't go live uh, until after. But um, as Miley Cyrus would say, that we, you don't have to buy Kel flowers. She can buy her own flowers. So. Why would Miley Cyrus say that? She has that song, Flowers. Craig, no. you haven't heard the song? See, you got to remove this from the pre-show. <laughs> Maybe. It's the biggest song in the world right now. Okay, after we finish talking to Sky I'm Wallace. I'm happy to leave this. I am happy to leave this in the pre-show. After we finish speaking with our guest, Sky Wallace, you listen to that song. Watch, watch the video even if you want to, but it's the biggest song in the world right now. Anyways, this is a music podcast, and uh, we're going to talk to a musician. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, the following podcast is brought to you by Radical Road Brewery, the best craft beer in the heart of Leslieville. Find them at 1177 Queen Street East. That's Radical Road Brewery. Hi, I'm Sky Wallace, and this is Welcome to the Music. Welcome, 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 welcome. Sky, it's an honor to have you join us today. Absolutely. Um, Thanks for having me. I understand that you grew up in Whitby. Is that correct? Uh, yes. I like spent the most time in Whitby. I like moved around quite a bit as I was a kid, but uh, that was always the place. Like my grandparents lived there. We lived in Ajax for a time. Okay. Uh, yeah. My grandfather ran the Whitby Curling Club. So we lived oh. behind the Curling Club for a while. Yeah. It was okay. very cool. And did you go to high school in Whitby or? I went to high school in Kitchener and oh, okay. Sunshine Coast, BC. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very cool. Because I grew up in Whitby. So I was going to ask Did you, you about high school. And if okay. you said Henry, I would have said right answer. And if you said anything else, I would have said that's the wrong answer. The right My answer is My mom went to Henry. Anderson. Yeah, ACB. Yeah, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. They were always the, com the the competition with us. Again, I went right. I went Henry before Whitby was as big as it is today when mm -hmm. we only had two high schools. So. There right. Yeah. No, so this it's really, is welcome, uh... welcome, welcome to your high school years. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the, name, the name of our show. So. I'm down to dig in and like, you know, unearth yeah, yeah. some trauma for sure. Cool. Cool. Uh, <laughs> this, this actually, this raises a question because mm -hmm. Greg and I have been checking out this, um, this chat AI technology. Oh, you've heard of this, right? Like the, uh, are you doing like visual AI? Like, no, no, just, you know, in, almost like a search functionality. Right, right. Yes. You know, because, uh, you know, we do this podcast, but then we, we, we also want to have something written when it goes on to the website. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so I'm always like, what do I put up there? Cause I'm, I'm a horrible writer. <laughs> um, and so I thought, oh, let's, 
check out this AI stuff. So I, I typed in who is Sky Wallace. Oh. And well, let's see if I can. Let's, uh, are you, just, are you, just, just to forewarn you. Yeah. Before we hopped on with story, he yes. was doing this <laughs> and he looked up who is Greg Tilston. And I was a musician back in the day. But okay. It went on. It went on about Greg Tilston is one of the most influential Canadian musicians out of <laughs> New Brunswick with a mix of folk and rock. And it's like, like, no. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> If this oh. is the future of AI, we're all safe in our jobs. Okay, go ahead. Go oh, yeah, ahead. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I asked them this. Sky Wallace is a Canadian singer-songwriter performer based in Vancouver. <laughs> I did live in Vancouver for a while. Yeah, now and you took, because when I went online, I said, wait, she's in Toronto. She's yep. from it's Whitby. This, this yeah. is wrong. It's all over the map. Yeah, so I, we don't know whether <laughs> or not to trust this, but, right. you know. But that is correct. It got kind of right yeah <laughs> so we're going to use it as your intro on the website whether it's true Please. yeah 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 spread Wait, that do you want, disinformation do you want to hear everything else <laughs> kind of or can we just use it and you check it out later whatever you want to do no, let's tell you. i'm we'll, curious we'll tell you. she is known for her powerful voice yeah oh that's nice unique brand of folk and roots inspired music <laughs> incorporates element of rock yeah okay blues and country with <laughs> with a strong strong passion for storytelling and activism mm -hmm. sky's music often touches on social and political issues okay and she has been praised for her ability to convey meaningful messages through her lyrics wow that's very uh yeah with it there's what more. a compliment <laughs> sky has released several albums from a bot <laughs> and toured extensively across canada building a dedicated following of fans Oh. Or drawn to her engaging live performances and heartfelt songs. What is this a like puff piece? Like <laughs> this is this is just what open AI spat out. No, I no, asked. it's like it's really uh it's like AI is buttering me up or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> what does it want? <laughs> doing a great job. <laughs> Anyways, Amazing. um that's really good. <laughs> yeah. Sky, here's the thing. Ooh. Are we going here? <laughs> Two things. Are we really going? We're, well, let's go. Let's, we have to go somewhere, Greg. So let's go here. So, Sky, two mm -hmm. questions for you. Yeah. First question. You've obviously heard the Miley Cyrus banger, Flowers, yes? Yes. Yes. Do you think every everyone who listens to music must have heard that song at least seven times so far? I would say on average. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Greg, Greg is when we're done, Greg is going to go. And, and there's a lot of super fans who have listened to it a million times to make up for my none. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I may man. have heard it for the record. Yeah. For the record, I may, I may have heard it. I just I, like, yeah, you might've heard it passively and it's subliminally in your head. <laughs> perhaps I'll have to listen to it afterwards. Yeah. And go, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I heard yeah. that. <laughs> okay. Sky. <laughs> your thoughts on i don't know whether you watched rihanna's performance i did you did okay mm -hmm. tell us your, your your thoughts on her performance um i thought it was really cool i thought it was very like empowering kind of set in motion as like you know talking about uh her being pregnant and performing in such a like massive way i thought it was a very cool show i it was hard to live up to last year's who had literally <laughs> everybody in the world yeah of course in it yeah, yeah, yeah um and yeah but it, it but it was awesome it was like quite a spectacle and also like it's really interesting to see how like super bowl shows nowadays are really playing to like what the camera is able to do yes as far as like filming and, and also just the like the widespread use of drones nowadays and like the skill that we have to to make wild things visually yeah, yeah. is pretty cool like it's a big difference Awesome. Yep. Well, Sky, yep. you're our new co-host. Greg is going to take a leave. <laughs> I've heard some hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate. Oh, it. Oh yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks yeah. for. Uh, I was expecting you to wear a hat. Your your toque. Uh, this you don't one? have to. That one. That's that's the famous <laughs> famous toque. Yeah, I do wear it all the time. I'm trying to build it into my brand because it's so comfortable. Nice. Yeah, well, I think it's part of your brand. Yeah, um, absolutely. But we'll, the, the hat will make a, an, an appearance. The toque will make an appearance later on. Yes, yes. Uh, in in the show, Con congrats on uh, 
on on the new album. Thank you very much. And on on Six Shooter Records, you just mm-hmm. uh, signed yes. with them. Yeah, yeah, I love them. They're so great. Now, were you company there? Who were you with before? Were you independent? Independent. Or? Yeah, this is my first label relationship, which is very exciting. I just always, I always kind of did things on my own, and I've slowly been adding team members over the years. Yeah. Uh, and this was the last what piece of a, the puzzle for now. What attracted you to Six Shooter? I've always been a big fan of theirs. Like, okay. um, just I think they were one of the first labels that I found out about when I found out about labels as a concept. And uh, I always kind of like loved the spaces that they have and like the the artists that they have on the roster as well are really inspiring, like Tanya Tagak and William Prince. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's just so much music that they put out that's really wicked and that I really like look up to as well, like like that I aspire to be like. And uh, it was the, a really good fit. We were talking for years and oh, wow. it just was the perfect uh perfect time so that's great yeah it's very exciting and i'm excited to get working on the next and the next and 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 what are you what are you liking about now being on a label versus you know being a jack of all trades and having to build out that team like what is what is it for you up to do right um it definitely as far as like uh content uh, planning during a release like it was a real relief to have people who knew what they were doing like you know as an artist you're expected to wear many hats yeah. um but it's impo- like you know like I'm not an expert in social media I'm not an expert in all these things so like it was a huge help to have somebody else who like knows the way of the internet and the algorithms and everything and just like plan it all out for me and discuss things with me so that it was still you know like intentional and authentic to me, but like, that was a huge help. Um, just in general, kind of like having the stability, like there's so many years where I was just like seeing if funding was possible or waiting around for a long time and like trying to like scrape together albums over the course of a year because I couldn't do, I couldn't afford to do it all at once. And so it's really Mm -hmm. nice to have the support, you know, the last one was over the course of the pandemic. So it was still piecemeal, but like, I'm very excited moving forward about doing, you know, just going into the studio for, a week or two and recording it in one cohesive whole. Um, so things like that. It's really, it's quite a game changer for sure. That's cool. Hmm. Was, was terribly good. Was that saved for six shooter or like, did we, you have the songs written? Already? We had, so we signed a week before the pandemic hit. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, wow. so that's when I kind of started getting it together and it was like you know a long process just because everything was so up in the air for so long but um it was the first yeah it was the first one under them from kind of start to finish which was very cool wow but so yeah like what did so you sign with them everything shuts down <laughs> what is what is your life like what do you like all these plans obviously yeah yeah, there were so many plans. There was like, you know, I had just gone to Europe right before everything happened in 2019 um, at the very end of that. And I did like a big cross country tour opening for Matt Mays. And I like was really, I you know, I, it was a wild thing because suddenly, you know, I had lots of plans to follow up on those those trips and those investments and things like that. But yeah. it's just, it's such a wild thing when it just all shuts down like that. So, it, you know, it's definitely been great since things have come back. And I feel like, you know, I, I've, felt really lucky as far as like being able to, you know, be have playing lots of shows and stuff like that. Um, But it felt like there was like a, is this going to come back? Is it all going to just be like, Mm. am I going to be left with nothing when everything returns? Um, And so it's been a big relief, I think actually like going through the process of the record because there was so many stops and starts and like so many emotions to to handle and navigate in the process so what what support um, this is really interesting because we've talked to a bunch of artists mm-hmm. some artists would be like you know we, we spoke with uh you know kim mitchell and mm-hmm. sass jordan and they're like mm-hmm. yeah we just we just hung out you know we didn't want to <laughs> do anything um we spoke with indie artists that had put like two three albums out um and what did Obviously, you put out terribly good, mm-hmm. um, but you just signed with Six Shooter. So, what? What? I'm curious about the support mm-hmm. that they gave or were able to give. Maybe there wasn't really much that they could do either. But 
I'm mm -hmm. curious if there was anything that the both of you did together throughout that process. Yeah, I mean, they were very supportive throughout the process. Like I had a lot of meetings with them, like bi-weekly, we would have meetings okay. from like the, I think for the entire year, basically, which was like start of January when we first put the, like the first single out was I think end of January, yeah. right till when the tour was finished at the end of November. So that was like, you know, bi-weekly meetings every, every two weeks. And that would be like, what am I doing now? What is like the next thing we need to get on top of and things like that. That was super helpful. Oh, wow. And just having like the resources, you know, like a Slack chat where we can like bounce yeah. things off of, of each other. If I have any questions, that's really great. Um, yeah. It's a funny thing, right? Because especially because of the pandemic, I signed with them. And then it's like, you're trying to build these relationships, but you aren't able to see them. And so it's mm. like, it's always a funny, like, yeah, learning how each other works. But it was really, I feel really fortunate. And like, it's, I'm flabbergasted at the support and how that feels. So yeah, like I said, I was doing everything by myself for so long that it's uh, very refreshing. Oh, wow, that is that's fantastic to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've you've played recently a bunch of festivals. Mm -hmm. um, I did a bunch uh, last summer. Yeah, and and was that the first time since twenty twenty that you you hit the road and performed live? No, um, I did. Let's see. I guess I, I first started playing live again in uh, like spring summer twenty twenty one. And okay. I had uh, I had a tour with Crownlands at the end of 2021, but it ended up being just Ontario and Quebec instead of it was supposed to be the Canada tour. Okay. Um, but just because of COVID measures and things like that in certain provinces, we just did Ontario and Quebec. But it was really nice to get out of the road again. Um, and then 2022, I was just talking about this with somebody. It felt chaotic. No, like I feel like everybody yeah. I talked to is like I didn't get. A moment of rest the entire year and it's it's insane eh? like yeah it is so true it seems like yeah. everybody went on the road yeah big time big yeah. time did you play the orbit room with yeah. crown lens no not orbit room um what was it, what was it? uh access or the old model oh, access yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 we saw it was there. great okay oh, i was really? gonna say that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice hell yeah yeah, yeah. No, that yeah. was a great show i i like that room and what they've done to it it's very cool okay good 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 yeah, yeah. um yeah, you rock that. I I remember. <laughs> yeah, that was that was really really good. Um, Thank you. When did you start? I'm curious whether the pandemic forced you to start creating online content hmm. because people cannot know your music. Yeah, and like love the stuff you do on Instagram and TikTok. That's by so way, true. By the way, by the way, I do want to jump in and say that your TikTok account is way better than Cream's. I just want to throw. <laughs> As a TikTok connoisseur myself, yeah, he's that's right. He's, he's always he's oh always bugging God. me to get me on TikTok. And I'm like, I'm not you two are roasting each other not, for my I'm benefit. Not. <laughs> not. It's uh, TikTok, especially, is a funny thing. Yeah, I um, I've come to terms with it. It took me a while okay. um, where I was just trying and anything and didn't know how to make sense of it all, or just like how to reconcile, like for instance, like my kind of comedy thing that I do well, that, that tends to get traction is yeah. like irreverent, stupid stuff, you know, like where I am like deadpan and I tell like weird mm -hmm. jokes or like say weird things or whatever. Um, and then just trying to reconcile that with like, you know, music that's not, uh, it's, it's not like comedy music. It's not like funny music. It's, you know, sure. some of the songs deal with like heavy subject matter and it's like, you know, uh, like a bit darker, tone to it um so at first i was like i don't know how to do this uh i don't know how to like marry the two and make it like this cohesive entity this cohesive brand thing yeah. but what i've noticed is that it kind of doesn't matter in a sense like mm. you're just selling your personality on tiktok which is really funny so what i'm doing now is like i'm doing the things like the weird irreverent things that actually bring me joy to make like i do like doing them so that's an added plus because i think that shines through but like people because they've seen me do like a really like a fart joke on tiktok they'll then like look up my music and like listen to my album and like i've even received a few messages from people being like hey like this really impacted me today like i don't didn't know you before wow. today but thank you so it's like you can see the you like the value there i don't like i do think like people are always like this is the like tiktok's the only way to do it like you have to be on tiktok and i think <laughs> i think that's too rigid of a thing like yeah, i think there are other 
there's there's so many avenues just with the access to the internet and things like that, streaming service, everything that you have as a, an artist nowadays. And I think it's there's just so many definitions of success that I don't think is the only thing, but yeah. it's nice to see it kind of like paying off in a, in a way that I can wrap my head around, I guess. Mm -hmm. Sky, yeah. did you think that you're going to have to, you're, you were going to have to incorporate comedy into your shows so that people <laughs> who well, found that, you on TikTok would say, oh, yeah, 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 the funny girl. That was actually something that like kind of made me wrap my head around TikTok is because mm -hmm. like I I kind of do already integrate that into like, I was like, okay, just think of it as stage banter. And yeah, yeah. then it was like, okay, that makes sense. I have told jokes on stage. I have like had a, you know, my weird irreverent stuff, like stories and things like that. Like that's the stuff that people are attracted to as far as the stuff I'm posting. And so I'm kind of like, okay, but like, I would say these things at a show for sure. <laughs> There's that like, even like, you know, there's lots of artists that do that, like Donovan Woods, for instance, most beautiful songs, heartbreaking, so soft, but like his comedy is out of this world. Like his Twitter account is <laughs> the funniest I've ever seen. So like, you know, if there's, yeah. I think there's, um, one doesn't beget the other. No. Yeah. It's funny because some of the, like, like I know, you know, back when I played, we, we took mm -hmm. improv lessons we you know we'd, we'd go to interesting S S second city and and i found a number of other musicians did as well so you'd practice really? off each other mm -hmm. which would help when you know the one of the amps blows up or something that's and you're, right you're trying to fill dead air and mm -hmm. that's what you do yeah. yeah yeah or even like just stage banter in general so much yeah. of it is improv because yeah. you know you can write out prompts and stuff but like i don't know it's better when it's on the fly yeah yeah so for sure. that's cool for sure. yeah where where did you get the idea of because you've got also i don't know if, if i call it a series where mm -hmm. you'll go into a record store mm -hmm. and you'll help your fans or your viewers like discover music mm -hmm. where did that come from well i think originally the idea was to kind of tie in spotify playlisting ah. with things um but it, it honestly, it was really cool because like my managers were in town at the time and we just like went around to all these record stores um, because we were like checking in to see like, you know, if we could find the like Mighty Record and like see yeah. if we can talk to the folks there if they didn't have it and wanted to get it and like direct them to the right channels. Um, but in the pro like I just I like to present things in a way that's like fun, I guess, because it's like what's like I don't want to hate doing it. Sure. I don't want to like force someone into it. So it's like, it's like we kind of came up with this idea of just like they they were taking like video of me doing all the record stuff. And I was like, this is actually fun. This is like a nice way of doing it where it's like, you know, a curated playlist, but like you can see all the tactile versions of those, of those pieces of art uh, and that music mm. uh, in the video. So, and, and I really liked getting into like, um, like recaps and stuff this summer. Like I did a lot, like every festival that we did, I tried to yeah. do a recap and like things like songwriting camps where people who aren't actively in the music industry might not know how that goes or something, you know? Like I think there's a cool aspect of uh, like demystifying a lot of like art experiences that I really like. So how are you now with putting yourself out there on, on social? Uh, you know, it's almost like, is it, is it now part of, part of your routine that, okay, I got to spend half an hour doing this or, or whatever the case is? I, I do. Yeah. I do set aside time usually every day, um, to, to do just like work on content stuff. And mm. I think I'm, I'm being a little less precious than I used to be. I used to be very mm. like perfectionist stuff. And now there's just a little bit more like fluidity that I'm really digging. Okay. And like at the end of last year, I was so burnt out after just like not just the year of putting out a record and touring yeah. like we did a Europe tour followed by a month long Canada tour. So it was just like a lot at that time, but even just like the three years of all that that entailed and everything kind of caught up with me where I like, I didn't like music anymore. Like oh, I didn't no. want to listen to it. I didn't like, like your own feel... stuff. You didn't want to perform and play or like that. I, I could get to that because like, I think that's like the live space does really bring me a lot of joy. Um, but just like, as far as music, like, I just didn't want to think about it anymore. I didn't want to like be planning something. I didn't want to like listen to a cool record and then be like, oh, I wonder about all this production things that like I can, you know, it just felt like I was exhausted. And yeah. so everything felt a lot more difficult. And then 
after the holidays, I went back to BC. My parents still live in uh, BC and spent some time with them. I spent some time in like a tiny house in the woods writing. And I came back and I was like, oh, I'm rested and I like music again. And I'm really Uh, inspired to do like content and social media too, because like it is a creative expression uh, and it's a cool way to reach people and and connect. Um, So I, I resented it a lot less when I came back. Surprise, surprise. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's that's good to hear. Yeah. Um I want to ask you about your everything is fine video. Mm. Oh, yeah. can I show you something? I guess the people yeah. at, uh, listening won't be able to see this, but Oh, this goes on YouTube as well. Oh, does it? Oh, perfect. Yeah, okay, yeah. There it is. <laughs> so so introduce us to this character. Who is this character? So this is the Swamp Thing. Yeah. They are uh, you know, pretty good things could be a little better but they're just trying to get through the day and bring themselves joy with whatever means they can uh and you know they're very sweet they like to take baths and smoke weed (laughs) hang out with their dog mojo mojo yeah what kind of dog is mojo she's a shiba inu beautiful dog yeah she's very sweet she's my best little buddy nice yeah um and i think at the end Mm-hmm. of your video you put the toque on is it at the end am i thinking another video your toque makes it's, an appearance it's a slightly different toque but it is similar oh. i am drawn to this style of hat because i only got the, this hat is actually balaclava as a fun oh. little fact okay like oh. like you can see my eyes through it if ah. i yeah but uh yeah i guess i have i have three green knit toques yeah they all look the same to me. You could change them. <laughs> they might be interchangeable. They're like varying uh, sizes, like largesse, I guess. Like <laughs> this one's huge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, there, I was, see there is a knit toque in the, in the video. Sorry. There is a knit toque. Okay. All right. Yeah, there is. Yeah. So like what is, that's almost, it's almost part of your personality. Like Greg, I'm shocked. Today's like two weeks in a row uh-huh. that on. Greg is Hold not on. wearing Hold a on. Dine Alone. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh. Is that Dine Alone? Oh, there you go. Oh, sorry. Of course it is. Still wrapping. Still wrapping. <laughs> still wrapping. Still yeah. wrapping. Dine Alone is not a sponsor of ours, but Greg no. seems to rep them every, <laughs> every, every single week. So I'm curious if so. That's part of Greg's personality, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or or his. Yeah, but I'm curious. Is is that is the knit toque or is, is that part of you? Like, what is that? That's almost like a comfort blanket for you. What is that for you? Yeah, I mean, it's a relatively new thing, to be honest. Okay. I, I just got it in November, December. Oh, wow. Like my new toque that I wear all the time. Okay. And I've just lived in it. Um, well, you know, it's cold. It's, <laughs> it's cold. Uh, you don't have to shower as frequently if you're covering your roots. Um, <laughs> oh, I got to write just, this down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No also, I don't know. I just, I like it. I like... Um, People roast me on TikTok for it, and I kind of love it. Really? Yeah, they call me Cactus Head and stuff. <laughs> but they say it lovingly. I'm hoping. Uh sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> but if it's not, it's honestly I kind of find uh, I don't know uh, amusement That's crazy. in it. it. That brings to mind <laughs> I, I I read somewhere that you hate mansplaining dudes. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> is that just in general, like, or or is it, or did well, something happen to you? Uh. And before you I mean, answer like, that, let me jump in and tell you. No, I'm kidding. I'm yeah. Sorry, go. Sorry, go. No, no. I guess I think if I'm thinking of the right one, there was the, an article that I did um, it, it, in the rock world. I feel like, you know, like as far ah, as yeah. equity and gender parity and things like that, like in a lot of other genres, it's moving along quite well. And there is like, you know, great diversity and equity uh, in a lot of genres. But rock is very like white cis male dominated uh and there is like you know a lot of there there are a lot of spaces where i haven't felt like welcome or like there's just like some weird like you know safety stuff every once in a while and then there's a lot of like assuming that i don't know what i'm talking about uh as a woman with you know like i've had my pedals explained to me like (laughs) when it's like well i own them and stuff like that or just like you know i know what to do with them yeah, or like a sound guy that won't like look me in the eyes when I'm trying to like explain the tech and will only 
talk to like the one dude in the band like that kind of thing happens and you know it's it is getting better there's a lot of awesome people doing awesome work and a lot of like dudes who do step up and and that's that is how change happens is like you know everybody kind of like coming together for it uh but huh. there's still a little space to go and sometimes that stuff still <laughs> happens and it's weird so yeah i don't know yeah i'm sorry you have to deal with that ah oh, thank you yeah. yeah it's good yeah um you're you're t i i want I, I had this question here mm -hmm. where where did you get your and we're going all over the place you, you can it. tell we're not professionals on this <laughs> on the <this> show <laughs> but um your comedic inspirations like where mm -hmm. usually we ask you know what kind of music did you like when did you start playing but like you're the jokes that you tell um you know i know you told a norm mcdonald joke that's i, love from, I remember that that's the moth yeah. joke yeah did the um, moth joke. but like who like are you a fan of comedy who are your favorite comedians um i'm like i haven't been the biggest stand-up fan in general like mm. there's a bunch of specials that i really liked like tig Notaro and like yeah. you know there's there's a lot of really awesome comedy out there but it hasn't necessarily been for me. I don't know if a ton really like influenced me, influenced, but like Norm Macdonald's a definite thing. There's like, there's like a goofiness of like, you know, like the Animaniacs realm growing up where like that was, or like the tick or something like that. Like uh, yeah. I had, I had um, uncle and aunt that I lived with for a bit that were in high school when I was a baby. And we were like oh, wow. when I was little too. And we watched like the tick and like freakazoid and like all these like, amazing <laughs> like just like kind of weird wacky shows yeah so maybe that there's also like um um i don't know i guess just like the the deadpan thing really yeah. resonates with me so i just that's that's kind of how i guess i listen i read a lot of dave barry when i was younger too okay kind of like weird tongue-in-cheek writing is kind of funny yeah your your moth joke your performance on point thank you like i try not to breathe too much and i don't blink and you were awesome. and i was like she's not even reading this thing I, were you no i couldn't yeah and i'm really good at memorizing that's like a that's mm. my my maybe that my was, biggest strength that was freaking awesome <laughs> <laughs> so so speaking of favorites mm -hmm. um moving from comic over to music i think i read somewhere that your favorite band if not one of your favorite bands is the weaker than yeah the yes Thans? absolutely what 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 do you what what's what are you drawn to the weaker than i mean i love them so i just uh, love them. yeah i think they really came they came to me at like a really perfect point in my life where it just really um like it made me want to create something it made mm. me feel really inspired and like made me feel something i think john's uh john k sampson uh, his songwriting is really beautiful. Like it's so poetic, uh, but then it's juxtaposed with this, like, you know, sometimes leaning into punk style music and, you know, like he was in propaganda before the weaker thens and that. So there's definitely a through line there, but like there was just uh, like an honesty and a beauty, like a celebration of, of like the tiny minute micro beauties of the world that I really fell in love with. And I think it, it, like I found them, <laughs> I found them because I, was downloading music on like like Kazaa or something. And I was looking up, do you remember that band, The Reason? Yeah. Yeah. I was like looking yeah. up The Reason and then their song, The Reasons was what I accidentally clicked on. And I was like, oh man, this isn't, oh, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> so it was a pretty like happenstance find, but I feel like I would have come to them anyway. They're just so, yeah, they're so good. I've met John a couple of times and he's just, He's the best. That's awesome. So, yeah. so dovetailing off of that, mm -hmm. uh, and I hope you'll excuse me, but oh, when yeah. we're doing our research, I, I I did creep you on on Facebook to see Excellent. which mutual friends we had. We have two oh, mutual friends. Cool. Uh, one is Will over at Cops. Who oh, I amazing! We and the other is Steve Davis um, from Before the Flood and or from oh, George. Yes. So so okay. I, I reached out to both of them to, <laughs> to to see what I could get, and uh, I figured our connection was music. But as soon as Will said that I needed to ask you about curling, which is the <laughs> dovetailing off the weaker thens, uh, yeah, tournament hearts. 
Uh, is that Tournament of Hearts? That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thing. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so, so, and then all of a sudden I'm thinking, well, Steve is a huge curler and Radical Road is with John Epping. So I have to ask you, Will, Will told me, you gave me nothing other than the fact that I had to ask you about curling. Okay. Well, um, I am the granddaughter of like a pretty well known ice maker, uh, Gord Carroll. And that's like I said, we were the curling club out of Whitby. I knew Gord what? when I was a kid. You did? I did. No way. Right, oh, yeah, my I God. Call, He's my grandpa. I'll come back later. Got, I got, I, honestly, I got goosebumps <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, wow. Gord scored my grandpa. We were, yeah, Gordon, we were really wow. close. Yeah. Gordon, my oh. dad, never that. No, yeah. honestly. Like, yeah, and JC, yeah. do you know JC wow. and Rob and I'm not all those sure. folks? No, JC, sure. uh, been, Janet, Janet's his daughter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. um, yeah, that's wild. So he's, yeah. yeah, he's my grandpa. So I was like, I was riding rocks when I was a baby, like he would just yeah. push me around and like, he was doing the ice at the club and we just always hang out. My parents got married there. Um, and then I started, like, I think he was one of the main folks that were kind of instrumental in starting like the little rocks programs that were popping up around yeah, then. Yeah. And so I sure. was, I think I joined little rocks when I was eight and then just curled regularly until, until I was about like almost end of high school uh, and kind of like dropped off a bit, but it's definitely come up a lot in my life. Like when I was in Dawson city, Yukon, I spent a lot of my time curling there. Uh, and I've done like, you know, a curling music video. And like, yeah. I, I saw my brother play recently and I was like, God, I got to get back into it. So yeah, that's next. But I, I love curling. I, I need to get back. And in fact, it's funny because my, yeah. my first job, I think when I was 14 or 13, mm -hmm. I was working with the catering team upstairs at the curling. Club. No way with, yeah, yeah. um, Oh, what was her name? The cook's this name. Was, this was, I'm a little bit old in you, so it could have been. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Was Barb uh, there? Yeah. Sorry? Was Barb there? I don't know. The admin person? I don't know. I, I <laughs> this don't, is so I cool. Think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that's wow, amazing. Kareem, you can come back in now. Yeah, family, yeah, yeah. family reunion. <laughs> family reunion. That's that's why we do this thing. That's so cool. Um let's talk about lost venues, Sky. Mm -hmm. Um there are you've you've toured uh around the world. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if you have a story from a lost venue. Could be a great story, could be a sad story, could be hilarious. But uh, wondering if you have a, a story in, in which venue mm -hmm. the story happens in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I was I was thinking about this a lot, and there's there's so many that I I probably am missing, but I have this like the one like experience that was just like shining through everything in my head was like the Silver Dollar in yeah. Toronto, um, which I'm not sure if they're like working to reopen it or not. Or I think it's going to be very different if it is. Like I'm not sure if it's yeah. going to be like the music venue it used to be. Uh, just the, like yeah, no, no. Uh, by design, like I think it's maybe going to yeah. be a different type of spot. But um, I went in there one time and it was CMW and uh, there was a person playing and I was like, what's going on? Like it was, it, there were a lot of people there, but it wasn't like packed, packed. Uh, and I was just like, this is amazing. Like, I can't believe how much I'm loving this music. And it was Courtney Barnett right before she blew up in like a major way. I think she got like, like a bunch of like Rolling Stone stuff. Like she was playing the silver dollar mm. uh, in Toronto for Canadian music. And I was just like, holy shit, <laughs> that is wild. Mm. And you know, like I think uh, Toronto's in like a funny stage of like post COVID, like, you know, some venues have shut and there's a lot that are like, you know, trying to make a comeback and things, but like, yeah, got to, Got to prioritize venues in yeah. the city because it's sad to see them go. Did you have a chance to play the Silver Dollar ever? I didn't. Ah. I didn't. It was a tragedy. Yeah, I can but, imagine. Um, yeah. I did get to play the old <laughs> Elma Combo before it became the new Elma Combo. <laughs> and it was um, very, it was a little dingy. Yeah, it was uh, a, not the uh, as a space the, the, the or like the people. Places. Yeah, it was just like oh. it, it. It needed some work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you think yeah. of the new Elma Combo? It's cool. It's shiny. Um, yeah, I've played there a couple times. Uh, just the upstairs, though. I was actually at a show on Saturday that was the downstairs, and I really like that. Like the, um, it's kind of like the instead of like the the upstairs stage kind of has like a narrow mm -hmm. audience area. Yeah where it's like not what you think it would be. That one downstairs is very uh, traditional. Intuitive. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. 
Oh, I didn't know there was a downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's the main floor versus the, the second floor. Ah, but okay. uh, yeah, it's nice. It's like there's lots of shiny new stuff. and is, yeah. is, So I haven't been to the main floor. I've been upstairs a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Is the, the downstairs main floor, is it a bigger room than upstairs? Because I thought that upstairs was... I think so too, but it does feel bigger okay. there just because it's all in one mm -hmm. straight ahead space. Yeah. Um, I think I think you're right that it is like the uh, second floor is the the bigger room technically, but it yeah it does feel it feels weird equivalent. <laughs> yeah, well, it feels intimate because it's just like like it's what I love about history. Again, history is mm. much grander and bigger, but I mean, mm. oh. what I love about history is it's designed wide. Yeah, right? you have that almost stadium sized stage in there, so no matter where you are in the venue, you've got a great sideline. And I find that's that true. the same way as the Elmo upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. And, and the sound there is really awesome. And they've really done nice stuff with the lights. Yeah. 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 I'm just, so have you played both levels, Sky? I haven't played the downstairs. I've only seen some fat friends play the downstairs. Okay. Cause I'm just curious, like on the upstairs, are you looking on the side where most of the people are or? Uh, I do. I did like a mm. straight ahead and then like a, a pan over to the left you know yeah you over thing. there yeah you yeah over, over there. there yeah yeah i see you yeah nice. <laughs> do my best to give everybody a a wink or something yeah, yeah. so sky i understand you have a uh, you have a song for us today i do yeah awesome why don't we introduce it first absolutely uh all right i'm gonna do you mentioned everything is fine so maybe i'll do everything is fine Okay, well, what, why don't you tell, you know, we, we talked about uh, mm -hmm. the, the appearance of the, uh, the swamp. Yeah. Um, swamp monster, is that what we call? Yeah, swamp thing. Swamp thing? Swamp thing, yeah. What's, what's the song about? Um, I wrote this song with a friend of mine in the depths of the early 2021 winter. Uh, and I wouldn't say that it's like a, a lockdown song at all, but it, uh, you know, I was in a place mentally. Uh, and I think a lot of us were. Um, and this was like a conversation. It's a person having a conversation with themselves mm. that they've lost touch with. And just trying to do whatever you can to be okay. Do whatever you can to, you know, talk about it and not shut down. Uh, yeah. And I think that that was like an interesting thing over the pandemic is that like talking about mental health was like a big conversation because uh, yeah. it had to be uh, and continues to be. So I think, yeah, it was that, that, I guess that vein of, of self-expression and like, you know, no, like telling yourself everything's going to be okay, even if it doesn't feel like it and, you know, being real with those emotions. Awesome. Yeah. Everything is fine. Here is Sky Wallace. How are you? Where have you been? It's been a long time And we lose touch Are you struggling? Are you buckling?
That was awesome. awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Fantastic. Greg, we are so no, honestly, we're like we get like a private performance every week. Every every, every time it's yeah. it's uh, an amazing thing. And we yeah, really thank you so much for that, Sky. Oh, thank you. Thanks for asking. Yeah. That's a great I like I like the uh, performance in the interview. I think that's a special addition. Yeah. You know? Well, it's funny because it it happened just by chance. Oh. We were we were talking with a, a friend of ours, former mm -hmm. BJ on Much, and she's like, "You guys really need to go towards the live stuff." And again, it's in the middle of COVID, so yeah. she's like, "You guys really need to focus on the live stuff." And so, so I, just after that, we had I don't know if you know Ocon, the uh, world mm. uh, world music band. Yes, one yeah, of absolutely. Yeah, and so we yep. had Ocon on, and and Cream just you know just got up the nerve and said, Hey, do you mind doing a thing for us? Wow. And so they did this acapella bit that I, again, goosebumps. It was yeah. just it's really unbelievable. Oh. Unbelievable. And from that point forward, we're like, we're going to ask every guest. And if they can't, no problem. Mm -hmm. If they want to record and sure, if they want to do it live. Awesome. You know, yeah. and so amazing. It was just, yeah, it was amazing. That's was cool. Awesome. I really like that. Yeah. So we got very important in-depth questions. Ooh. First one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you found your pants? Oh, I was gonna ask that. <sighs> I haven't found the pants. No. Yet. I haven't found the you pants found yet. No, I have a bad habit of doing this. I do it to a lot of pieces. And I'm just like, oh, I don't need to buy that. And it's like, oh. yeah, you need to invest in your aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> so you haven't found the pants yet. I haven't found the pants. Uh okay. for those listening who don't yes. know about my pants, I uh did a photo shoot uh and I ended up taking some photos with these really wild rainbow pants and they made it to the front of my new record and I don't own those pants. I can never do a show in those pants. I I, I messed up. So I'm in the process of trying to turn Toronto into like my minion army to try to find my pants. Um, any leads? Uh, there were some pants that could be really good alternatives if I don't find the actual pants. Oh, okay. Which, you know, it doesn't have to be the actual thing, but just the overall vibe, I think. Cool. I'll, I'll and if anybody that. wants to see the pants, yep. and we're going to ask you to share your links at the end, but you can go to Sky Wallace Music on Instagram. Yeah. And there's a pin post with the pants. So if you want to help right. in the search to find the pants, that's where you go. Check them out. Sky Wallace <laughs> Music. Look at yeah. Greg, the music. promo. Thank promo. you. Hey. Yeah. That's where it's at. So tell us about this. Was it a stranger, a friend, who got you tattooed on their I arm? On their did arm? Not, on their arm. Yeah, I did not know the person. Wow. I knew the person who gave the tattoo because he was the person who designed that design for my merch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he just like he was like, oh yeah, by the way, this is happening tomorrow. And I was like, whoa, okay. And I guess like that happens like people get tattoos of of like their favorite bands artists whatever but i guess it's because it's like specifically me it's so like yeah such a strange new thing i was just like oh my god i was very flattered very honored so does this person get thing. do they get like free tickets every time oh yeah band? i feel like that was the thing when i was younger i went to like a lot of album leaf shows you remember that band which band the album leaf no yeah, mm -hmm. they they did a thing where if you got a tattoo of their logo, their like little emblem, then you get free, you get guest list all their shows. So yeah. I'm definitely gonna do that. You're gonna do that. Yeah, that's they awesome. A, you know, it's pretty. That's going all the way. So that is good stuff. <laughs> Listen, I, I need to share with you as as we get close to wrapping up. Mm -hmm. Um, share with you some iconic Canadians. And uh, well, some of them are iconic. Some of them are great, but I'm sure you know them all. Okay. Um, but we'll start with an iconic venue. And okay. your thoughts on them? Commentary. Massey Hall. I just went not too long ago for the new refurbished Massey Hall experience. Who did I saw you Sarah see? Sarah Harmer. Them? Sarah uh -huh. Harmer. Yeah. How was that? It was awesome. It sounded so beautiful in there. And it was just, yeah, everything's all done up and it looks so pretty. That is fantastic. Yeah. Yours fantastic. and my favorite artist. Mm. 
Neil, I, uh, yeah, I, I read that book. Isn't it amazing? It's awesome. I love him. Yeah. He's just like, what a guy. That's like a total rock star. Total rock star. And I, I love that he does kind of like toe that line between like, he does like the singer songwriter thing and he has like the really rocking like yeah. Marshall Stack stuff. It's like all these things in between. I love it. Joni. <laughs> Blue. What an out. You, have you, you've listened to this, of course. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Love it. It's a gorgeous album. Here we go. Now you've played, you've obviously played with, with them. Crownlands. Have you heard their new song? It's an 18 minute long single. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, uh, then no, I haven't. It's called, I think it's called Starlifter Fearless Part Two. It's very sick. Hmm. What do I have here? I've got, I've got another one by them. I think I got Fearless Part One maybe. Ooh, yeah. Or something. What do I have here? I got like three of their stuff. Cool. Fearless part one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They have such cool art. Well, listen, too. did you have you heard their rendition of birds? I don't know if I have actually. Oh, my goodness. You need to go you listen to okay. it. Okay. I will. Oh, Absolutely. It is, it is just amazing. Now, are are you like is was there a Whitby hangout with with Crownlands? Did you we know We did play Oshawa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh. that was great because it was like, you know, a lot of Homecoming. family and like, yeah, it was for sure. Yeah, did, it was nice to both. Play? Uh the Biltmore Theater. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is great. They've done a really good job there too. Nice do you know spot. Candle? I do know Candle. I love Candle. Yeah, she's amazing. She is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We always like flirt with each other on social media <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> I was I was going to share one quick thing about the Biltmore. Um, so mm. my son, who's a few years younger, not many more years younger than yourself, mm -hmm. uh, he and I and his friends, and we went and saw Weedus at the Biltmore. Ooh, interesting! At the yeah. Biltmore Theater. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That the next seems day like they were a... playing. I think the next day they were playing like the Havelock um, Royal. Um, oh. Uh, whatever. And, Havelock. And... Uh, that's up near like. Campbell Fur. Uh, yeah, up that way. Up that way. Yeah. And, and I just okay. picked the name out, but it's like they're literally playing the Legion kind of thing. It was really oh, oh wow. Yeah, it was Damn. Really anyway. So That's so we wild. were upstairs and uh we're like, where do you want to sit? And my son goes, Well, there's the weedest private area. And yeah. we're like, okay, let's go sit. So we sit down. I take a picture, I send it to this guy, he tweets it, and next <laughs> thing you know, Weedus is retweeting, hey, you know. Oh! <laughs> it was hilarious. Like, all right. All my right. God, you you're... crashed your box rocks, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. your teenage dirtbag dream. Absolutely. That's wild. Beaches, yeah. There's like a renaissance happening, or maybe it's not. Maybe it's always been there, but like female rock. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, it's it's, uh, it's happening. Yeah, it's very really, sick. I think so. Yeah, um, they're so good. Yeah, yeah. I love that band. Listen, I love your new album. Thank you. It is it is awesome. Um yeah, looking forward like what's what are your plans? Do are are you touring soon again? Mm -hmm. Uh let's see. I've got Where like can we see you. Uh I'm playing in Muskoka a couple weeks from now with Sam Roberts. It should be yes. fun. All right, he's opening uh, for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um then I'm doing South by uh oh, yeah. in austin texas in march which should be fun and i'm going to be doing uh two nights at the cameron house in toronto leading up to that it's not announced at this point but i what when does it this come out oh with greg's schedule it might come out 2024 okay so <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna say it uh yeah we're playing two nights at the cameron house march 10th and 11th um and then yeah just doing like festivals this summer i'm gonna go back to europe in may and the fall Okay. Uh, go back to like Germany, UK and Italy and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, just like going to be focusing, like I'm writing right now and okay. going to be Ooh, doing a new record music. in not too, too long. And yeah, I'm very excited. I feel like very uh, inspired. Whose decision is Europe? Is that your, like, do you tell yeah, Six Shooter I, I'm going to Europe? Like it's obviously informed by, you know, lots of info. It's like, you know, whether okay. you'll 
fit the market, whether it'll make sense financially and all this stuff. Um, yeah. But I had been kind of putting my feet in the water there for some years where I okay. knew a few people who kind of hooked me up with some Italy connections. And so I, I think I've done like five tours there. Um, and then, you know, started booking like crappy little shows in Germany myself. Uh, then we played Reaper Bonn, which is a really awesome festival and conference in Hamburg. And we played that in 2019. So from there, we like met an agent. And okay. so it's kind of been like a long process of like me going over and trying things out and seeing, getting my footing, making connections. And, and it's been good. Like, especially the last tour was like unbelievable. So I'm excited nice. to go back. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. So Sky, one of the last questions I'd like to ask, yes. um, and it's, it's, here's a, here's your, your curveball um, mm. that you mentioned earlier. Uh, <laughs> what are you listening to lately? What are you listening to lately that people should be checking out? Let's see. Um, I've been crazy about like five to 10 songs that I've been listening to kind of on repeat. Like I'm really into uh, this artist on Dara right now. Uh, I've been listening to the new Yaya yeah, yeah, Yaz mm -hmm. stuff is really great. Um, Mitski. I don't know if you guys know Mitski. Um, I think my favorite song right now is this like weird. It's from like some years ago, but it's like, uh, it's called Le Fat Fur and it's Conan okay. Moccasin and uh, Blood Orange. Okay. Uh, and it's like, the vibiest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it's very, very cool. What kind of music is Andara? Uh, the, I'd say like singer songwriter, like acoustic based, but there is like full band instrumentation on the recordings. Okay. Um, but I think they perform solo a lot of the time. I'm not even sure like if they're performing these days, but just listening to old oh, records wow. and stuff. Yeah. Only reason I ask years mm. ago, like this is years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, my my sister's an awesome singer. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't do it as a career, but she hooked up with some producers mm -hmm. and put out two albums, one under the name of the Blue Divide. Okay. And another one, I think it was her first, with, and they called their collective Andara. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And I'm trying to, it's, I want to say it was, it's pop. Okay. with some middle eastern flavor interesting uh, okay but i had totally forgotten that name right until you said it just mm. now i go where do i Weird. know that i know that band where do i know yeah that band? yeah i think i think they were originally like had two initials to their okay. name and then ondara was their last name i think they're ah. from kenya but okay. yeah yeah uh very cool sky very cool music this has been fun Yes, this has is. been awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank You're you. The best. Thank you. Um, <laughs> people are going to want to buy your record. They're going to want to see you on tour. Oh, yeah. um, where is it? Skywallacemusic.com. Is that the best place? It's skywallace.com, actually. Skywallace.com. Um, but yes, S K Y E uh, has a little E at the end, and it's W L L A C E. My last name, uh, but yeah, I'm on all the Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, you name it. Uh, and I do have like a mailing list on my website. I don't send out a ton, but I will send out the important stuff. Awesome. Uh, and you can listen on anywhere you stream your music. Thank you so much again, Sky. <laughs> have a an awesome evening. Thank you, and, guys. Uh, looking forward to hopefully seeing you at. Uh, the Cameron House in March. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for, I don't know, just very thoughtful interview questions. And, and oh. also, Greg, I'm so stoked that you know my grandpa. That was really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's really weird. <laughs> I'm actually going to, I'm probably going to message my dad as soon as I get off here. Yeah, I believe this. That's we so only, cool. We only interview family members. Yes, absolutely. That's, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sky, thank you awesome. so much. Yeah. Thank you guys. All right. All right. Have a good night, fellas. Take care. You too. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.